It's Friday. Finally. <laughs> oh, man. This has been a rough week this week. I'm telling it you. It has not been a good week. Well, we kind of, as you've seen, I know y'all follow us on Facebook and Instagram and everything. We took off Monday because our little girl, our middle one, went to the pumpkin patch. Yeah. And yeah. family pretty we much. Monday, too. Did y'all? Oh. Well, family's everything to us right now, especially, you know, during these times and stuff. But anyways, we decided to go ahead and take off and he's catching up on business right now. <laughs> That's why he's not back here with me. Yeah. But uh, trying to play the catch up game the rest there of the you week, go. you know how it works. It happens. Hey. It's funny to see that Milwaukee stuff on here. It is. I guess now that we're kind of an authorized distributor of it, we can talk about it, right? Yeah. We're not going to get in trouble for it. You don't have to hide so, no more. So, I don't know if any of y'all's distributors have let y'all know this or not, but um, Maco is adding Milwaukee part numbers daily. Like, I mean, somebody get on here and they said, they asked about this last week, and we're like, well, I don't know. So, we pulled up the page that they sent us, mm -hmm. same thing that y'all can see. And it was on there, so I just kind of double clicked it and looked on my catalog, and sure enough, it was available. So we'll show it if you want to. Yeah, I actually want one of the 18 volts. I've got the 12 volt. I actually, because you know my wife's new car, it don't mm -hmm. have a regular cigarette lighter plug. Oh, so I I'm a that. big advocate on you should always have a tire pump in your car. You know, no matter what, a tire always. pump and a jump pack. And you got to know how to use it. I'm just going to throw that out there. Because if you stick it on there and you don't know how to, like, get it correct, it will just, your tire will be flat. <laughs> don't ask me how I know. <laughs> so, you know, I, I had a 12 volt one, a nice one, like a mm -hmm. really nice one. Well, we get in our car and the darn thing don't even have a cigarette lighter. It's USB only. I was like, well. How does so that I work? I bought a um, 12 volt Milwaukee and put in there. So anyway, I kind of got used to not having to have the cord, right? Because mm -hmm. last week I hooked my gooseneck up, pulled it out of the driveway. It was in some pretty deep grass. It was in a hay field. Uh -oh. And I pulled it out where, and I was like, well, shoot, I got a low tire. I had to unhook the truck, back the truck up next to the tire because my cord went long enough to reach it. So it was uh -oh. all this extra work. I'm like, if I had another <laughs> one of those stupid battery pumps, I wouldn't have to do all this crap. Exactly. So. Well... We but ordered. I want a bigger one because it took forever for that little bitty 12 volt pump to air it up. Well, this one right here do it then. I'll just tell you. There we go. All right. Well, of course, that's it. Yep. And I mean, it's got an auto shut off feature. I mean, you just throw the battery in there. I think it actually has a, yeah. Yeah, right the big there. battery hole too, so you can mm -hmm. put a 12 volt or a 12 yep. amp in there. And then you just if you kinda... could afford them, like oh, you... you almost have to take out the Metco credit loan to buy the 12 <laughs> 12 amp batteries. Yeah, <laughs> but you know they catch them on sale, and then you know we're able to kind of show y'all that till you know, yeah. too. But I mean, Michael, we got a few in, and he was talking about needing one because you know we're actually driving to our expo in February. Where's it at? San Antonio. Oh, y'all are nuts. No, last year it took us over 24 hours to get to Vegas. Yeah, but that was just a fluke, dude. Oh, you say that, but then all these delays now. <laughs> I flew all over the place. Like, I have got a two-hour delay, I will yeah. say, and it's a pain in the butt. But there's no way in hell I would drive a San Antonio. I used to drive a truck for a living, remember? Oh, uh, well, see, we there's, don't. I'm telling you, it is not. Well, we've drove to uh, Dallas multiple times. Like, I mean, that's oh, yeah, two Dallas extra hours. Fine. What's that? Yeah. You know, so we're gonna strike out and I'm gonna say gonna make sure probably go. <laughs> an hour into the return trip home, you're gonna be like, God, we should have flew. Well, because it's only if you fly to Nashville. Mm -hmm. Now, hear me out. You can fly from drive to Tupelo, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Get on an airplane, 30 minutes. You're in Nashville. Okay. Yeah. Two hours later you'll be there like well dumb. unless your flight attendant refuses to get off the other plane and then you're stuck at the airport because they don't have enough flight attendants and they i think they got that fixed because i've flown a lot now i did get a two hour delay last a week before last because they had a seat belt issue on the plane a seat belt a seat issue. belt issue oh well. so why we couldn't just say hey this seat's not available to be used. I don't know, but hey, we had a seat belt issue. They grounded the plane, and then we had to get off the plane and get on another plane for one seat belt. Oh, that's nice. Anyway. 
I'm just yeah. happy I ain't got to deal with shipping <laughs> stuff back. Because she grabs everything and anything. Yeah. And I, I usually got this big old box, and it's UPS is nine miles that way. We have to walk it to it and uh, mm -hmm. just throw it in the back of the truck and come on home. <laughs> I think if they give you a free catalog, you're supposed to take it. I mean, that's like our Nipix one. I had it from the first one. Yeah. See? Never know. Never know. <laughs> <laughs> but. Anyways, I was telling them about the, the Milwaukee this, inflator. Yeah. You want to enlighten them on anything else? Uh, I don't know that they can hear me very well, but oh. um, yeah, we. Uh, I wanted one of those, so we put it, put it into the truck, and then we uh, turned it on, uh, set the mode on, or set the PSI on it, hit the button. I mean, it was quick, fast. It didn't. Mm -hmm. It didn't try to stall down. It didn't do anything. Which now, uh, the recommended pressure on my truck at the house is 35 psi. So that's not like that super right. high. Um, I think it said it had like 100 max. Uh, when you get up that way, I can see it start to kind of. Um, it, it probably struggled just a little bit. Now, if it says that's max, I have no doubt that it's going to hit it. It just wouldn't be as quick. I mean, I was. The time that it took me to unbox this, get a battery put in it, a weak battery at that, it only had two bars. Um, the time that it took me to do that and get the tire aired up was maybe five minutes tops to whereas normally I have to look for an extension cord, mm -hmm. get it plugged into my compressor. It's one of the pancake compressors, so it's not a real big one, yeah. um, but still waiting on that thing to air up. Everybody knows on one of those, if the air pressure is not a a pretty good a bit above what you're trying to put in it gets to that stalemate to where you're just mm -hmm. sitting there in a steady um, losing battle one yeah. it's not really going up plus I always have to find my um, inflator it's it's just a headache so this made it so much quicker mm -hmm. um, I really like it um, let me turn your mic up so it'll oh, sorry <laughs> you, uh, you got it better. yeah they probably think it's Yeah, it's nice that y'all are able to sell Milwaukee at least, because, man, everybody buys Milwaukee, you know. It is what it is, right? We gained, um, as a tool dealer, um, it's kind of different than most stores. You know, most stores you're trying to figure out how to get foot traffic to come in, and once they come in, you're almost guaranteed to sell, even if it's small. A tool truck is kind of different. Uh, you can get them to come in. That don't mean they're walking off with anything. Yeah. So. Um, We've been trying to figure out how to get some new customers and stuff, and it's actually generated new customers. Some of them we've had before, but they paid off. Mm. Um, you know, there's some people that's got everything they need, so they're only going to buy the new and great and stuff. Um, so we, we actually gained two to three new customers yesterday. Um, but at the same time, we're still selling our um, Infinium. We had the camo kits. I was a little worried about, you know, when you have them, and then you have the Milwaukee, uh, what our customers, how they were gonna react, which way they were gonna go. Uh, we sold out all of them and actually got an order for some more. Um, so we're having to look for some more to get some people. That's good. Um, I just had a customer call me while I was up there and uh, that was really what he was talking about. So they're both selling good. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact that they're gonna, um, we are gonna shorten our impact line um, but from what I'm being told it's not going away um, we they did tell us a few of them that's going to go away but not all of them it's going to be the least selling stuff right so well, that makes sense. I'm okay with that you know um, to be able to have one of the best selling impacts right now um, kind of both the best of both worlds because the Maco sells really well but also Milwaukee, everywhere you go, somebody's got something Milwaukee and they've got the batteries and we've talked about that before, but just yeah. uh, being able to go back and forth. So um, it, it's a good thing for us. It's a good thing for our customers because it allows us to be on the spot with more. Um, well, it's easier to access stuff too. Like if you're invested in the Milwaukee platform, right? Yep. Like, and you need another battery and it's on a Saturday, you guys aren't around, you get Milwaukee batteries pretty much anywhere now yeah you know so well and that's like the thing well, Napa has on this one, so. yeah well and that's the thing you can get you can get Milwaukee just about anywhere like you yeah. said um, 
your tool trucks are usually going to be a little higher um, but we do finance it out so if you if you can't go to napa and pay that 500 and something dollars for that impact you can come to us and, i mean it depending on the model or the bundle or the deal that's going on you're going to pay a little more but you're going to have the payment system so that that works out well i know we talked about um the psa department last week with the mm -hmm. cart deals and stuff um, that's great but you're almost always if you're buying on a truck you're buying on uh, the trust system which is us giving you a trust with so much money basically um, so that works out well as long as the customers understand you know you got to make your payment stuff right. like that i did read on one of the comments um, that one of the guys dealers actually was able to finance the box uh, for him which means that he took 100% uh, cost of the box and said, hey, if this guy doesn't pay, yeah. I'm going to pay it. You know, So mm -hmm. that guy must have been a really good customer. Uh, there's not a lot that you can do that for. The main reason being is if something happens, if life gets in the way, life's going to get in the way. Uh, we see it time and time again. You've still got that bill that you owe for, but who's really going to worry about that bill when your kid's in the bonner right. or your wife's in the emergency room or something like that so um, he must have been a really good customer but I, I i think that's the the major drawback to tool trucks is we do have to charge a little more um, that's not on that's not me or her decision uh, that's we're buying the more hands that's in there the, mm -hmm. the more it's going to cost Absolutely. so I, I think with like the milwaukee you know they sell the home depot they're selling the maco for probably the around the same price that they're selling the home depot and then they sell it to us so maco's got to make their money too mm -hmm. i think you brought it up before that they've got a bunch of people and whether it be marketing customer service financial services they gotta pay all of them so it's a lot of hands to get that's a lot of hands get in the jar at one time <laughs> it is it is so it's one of those things um we do the best we can and it seems to be working so there you go what what new uh, is this new those ain't new but they might as well be um <laughs> we had those a while back and they sold absolutely wonderful but what we started seeing is our adv stuff started getting really hard to get a hold of uh we've been down that back order conversation a, a lot too yeah. um which we have started getting some of our um penless swivels in um finally huh? finally i had customers that were I gotta say, my customers were better than I was ever as a technician because they waited, they knew, they understood. So what we did is we actually started warrantying these out, or what I started doing, I don't know that everybody did. I actually started warrantying these out with the ADV and telling them, hey look, when your socket comes in, just bring me the ADV back and we'll get you back to these. Because you paid a lot more for these right. than you did yep. the ADV. So we started doing that. These have started coming in a little bit. They're not super fast right now but it brings up the good conversation of these here we all know um, that the adv it'll say it on the package they're made in taiwan uh, and everybody said Whoop, that just jumped off there it went underneath that box <laughs> hey, how about that uh they, these are made in taiwan uh it'll say it on the box everybody always says well you know that's why we need to make it here the biggest problem is these are made in the usa and they were still super hard to get. Um, so we, we fought that battle. These fine, that's what I was getting to. These were here, they sold great, and then all of a sudden ADV got super hard to get. Yeah. We kind of lost them. We are starting to get some ADV stuff in a little quicker. Um, I figure it's gonna go back to where they're hard to get to again. And that's why I've told everybody that's come on the truck this week and the last few weeks, if you see it, you and you have room <laughs> i don't know what you need to do but you better grab it um yeah. we're, we're definitely trying to order more um that's a constant battle you know we're we're ordering three or four or five more than what we need and they're all selling within the first two weeks so it is what it is the impacts the macro impacts i was talking about um we have one guy that we're trying to get another set for uh he just he, he couldn't make up his mind he had to think about it which i understand i respect that they sold out so now we're having to try to find him another set and then we had that other guy that called this morning so it's one of those things um i get it everything's up you're trying to figure out a way to pay this you're trying to find a way to pay that yeah. um you have to have that balance in act you know 
you got to have the balance and act and you got to find out uh, what you really need and when to really buy it. Mm -hmm. um, well, if you got a good dealer too, like I know we've done, we we may have even talked about this before. I know I was looking for something one time, and you're like, "Hey, if you wait till next month, that's going to be on sale. If you don't have to have it right now, you know." And you know, I don't know that all dealers would do that. Like I would if I was a dealer, <clears throat> yeah. You know, and it was a good customer. Like I'd be like, "Hold on." I try to do that. Our our computer system will usually let us know um, the next flyer. Like if we type that part number in, it'll pop up. Um, if it's something that's not back ordered or something like that, I try to let them know right away, hey, this is going on sale. Um, but if my computer already tells me that it's going on sale and I can already order it at that price, I'll go ahead and sell it to you at that price. Right. Um, but if I know, um, like if they come out with an email and say that the next week these prob or not next week, next month those pry bars are gonna go on sale for 50 bucks less, I'll give you that option of waiting. Um, and most of the time they'll do it. Now, if I got it on the truck and I know they're going on sale, I'll go ahead and give you the price. If right. I don't have it on the truck though, and you're wanting to order it, hey, let's wait two weeks and order mm -hmm. it then, and then you'll get the sale price. And we've done that with, with the grinders. We've done that with several other things because mm -hmm. grinders go on sale randomly for buy one, get one, you know. Um, they're always giving you buy the angle, get the straight free or something like that. So um, that's always a good deal that we, we try to forecast and let people know but also some of the ratchet deals when you're first getting started um, and you have the ratchet bundles yeah. where they come with extensions and stuff. The number one thing I hear is, well, I don't need the extensions. I've already got them. I don't know about you, but I have you several sets have of extensions. extensions. <laughs> if it's cheaper for me to buy the ratchet with the extensions, um, I'd rather do that than pay more for just a ratchet, yeah. which our ratchets, we put them on sale just because we had plenty of them. And as you can see, there's not many up there anymore as far as the three eights goes. So sales do work, right? That's it. But Everybody likes to save a little money. Well, I appreciate y'all coming by. I'll talk to you about that inflator when we get the camera off. But like always, guys, thanks for hanging out with us this week. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Check over here for merchandise. Cool tools and discount codes down here if you're not subscribed. Click that button. Y'all have a great weekend. See ya.